Hey, it's Deborah from Neuroengineering Institute. Thank you so much for joining me. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. We're building up our subscribership and definitely hit the bell button so that when I record new content that you're going to get a notification so you can jump over here and, and get the information straight away. And I wanted to invite you to my upcoming Business Accelerator Bootcamp in Los Angeles on September 6th and 7th. Um, we're going to be going through two whole days of literally roll up your sleeves, very intimate setting. I'm only bringing in 20 people. You have me for two solid days and I'm going to give you everything that's in my business accelerator system so that you can scale your business into 2019. We'll go over the structure that's necessary. We'll go over the mindset tools, most importantly. We will go over the strategy that you need to create a really powerful 2019 and obviously to finish 2018 really strong. We'll go over the systems that are necessary so you can automate and get out of that loop of you know trading time for money and we'll go through the processes so you don't have to keep repeatedly doing the same work over and over and over and we'll get into the people you know how to attract a winning team how to be a really amazing coach so that you can inspire your team to be peak performers on a consistent basis and of course we're going to go through your revenue streams and i'm going to give you every tool that you need to increase more revenue in your business so let's get into today's conversation so when we're talking to ourselves, which is kind of nonstop, um, we're usually saying negative things. I think I read somewhere on the internet that something like 77% of all of our inner dialogue is negative. Doesn't surprise me at all. I know I've had to literally crawl out of the bottom of the barrel on my negative self-talk in my lifetime. And not just once, you know, it's like I've crawled out of there and repatterned myself in every single area of my life. It's, it's, it was no uh, simple, easy task, let me tell you. But it, it really was a, a blessing in a way because it, it inspired me to learn tools that I could then share with others. I'm like, no person should have to go through what I went through in reinventing absolutely every cell in my being in, in every area of my life. Cause I grew up in this really abusive home and it was a space where uh, you know, I, I don't really believe that there's evil on the planet. I like to believe that, you know, we all come from a place of love. And in my background of studying neuroscience and studying neurolinguistic programming and, and other spiritual tools, you know, the one thing that is for sure that I, I connect very well to is that we all are at the basis of our being. We all are love. And we're all doing the best we can with the resources that we have. And sometimes we don't have any resources. Sometimes the resources we have are modeling people that were broken. And you know, as the saying goes, hurt people hurt people. So, you know, I, I come from that, um, that background of being raised by a family of hurt people. And so it was just kind of passed on as a, a generational thing. And it wasn't just one or two generations. You know, I think this has really been a, uh, uh, multiple generations, maybe dozens of generations. I don't know, but I came out of this space where it was very much, um, beyond the words dysfunctional. It was, it was, it was abusive. And what I learned through this mirroring of relationships through other people is that I wasn't good enough. I wasn't worthy. I wasn't lovable. Uh, I, there was no way I was acceptable that there was definitely something wrong with me and that, you know, they really didn't want me around except 
to, you know, project their own pain and suffering onto. And, and, you know, admittedly I was an empath. So I was like a little sponge and I basically, I took it all on and, um, I made some really who disjointed decisions about myself that they must be right that you know if i'm going to keep hearing from these people that there's something wrong with me and that i'm not good enough then maybe they're right you know so i built up a lot of neurological bandwidth on that concept and then one day it was like i had the first of many awakenings and i said to myself you know this really isn't the truth. Maybe it's their truth, but it doesn't have to be my truth. And I can stop the cycle of abuse. I'm the pioneer in the family. I'm the one that stepped forward and said, no more abuse, no more abuse of others in my family and no more self abuse because that seemed to be where you got the gold star you know if you've grown up in a family that's abusive the more you can abuse yourself the more they approve of you because then you become just like them so i decided i wasn't going to do that to myself anymore and i went down a path of non-stop i was like an immersion of self-discovery and just to kind of give you a little bit of background. So I started out with metaphysics and I began studying Louise Hay and the thoughts of um, Tarot and um, the thoughts of the science of getting rich by Wallace D. Waddles. And, you know, I just kept absorbing all of these um, spiritualists that were at the beginning of the last century like Florence Scovel Shin like some really old school stuff and Ogbandino I mean I just lived for it and the whole while it kept bumping up against this program that I had and it was like this conflict within me you know on this hand I've got this whole background that you know, I'm, I'm nothing and I'm worthless and I'm just their punching bag and their sacrificial lamb. And then on this side, I've got all of this input of all of this amazing material that kept saying the same thing, regardless who it was, who was saying it. Zig Ziglar, you know, I started like being, I was like the fan of this stuff. I couldn't, um, Charles Hannell, like I couldn't stop absorbing it. And I loved it. So it led me into, wow, okay, so if I've got this conflict of messages, then I have to build up some, some, some momentum on the positive message so I can start to, you know, hit that tipping point where I'm recreating myself. Well, I didn't know at the time, or at least I didn't know how to language it, that what I was really doing is I was bringing myself home to the truth of who I am. I was bringing myself home to the truth that I am worthy and I'm worthy just for being. You know, and this is what I wanted to share with you today. So you're worthy just for being you. And I had seen that um, on a couple of YouTube videos where there was someone talking about that and I'm like, okay, 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 worthy for just being me. Well, I, you know, I, I've had a lifetime of people telling me that, you know, they don't want me around, they don't want to see my face, they don't want to hear from me, you know, don't talk to us. In fact, they thought I was, um, I was crazy and I needed to, to go to a psychiatrist because I was reading Louise Hay and I was starting to feel good about myself. So the, you know, the thing, the takeaway from that is when you're working on yourself, people don't go rushing home to your family and try to save them. Just leave them be and just work on you. Okay. And they'll see the change and they'll come around or maybe they won't. Doesn't matter. Look, it doesn't matter. The important thing is, is that you learn to love yourself. So, Anyway, as I'm going through this whole process and I've got this massive conflicting messages, I had to find a toolbox that would enable me 
to repattern all of this, let this stuff go. Like not even to repattern it, to dissolve it, to release it, to, to begin to take the focus from, okay, there's something wrong with me. These people must be right because they're my family and your family's supposed to love you and protect you. So they must be right. To actually going, I don't know these people that wrote these books, but they're all saying the same thing and they all look to be like they're living really happy, fulfilled lives as opposed to the mirror I was getting over here with these unhappy, angry people. So over here I'm seeing all these amazing people that are con well connected all over the world. So I said, all right, I have to know how to do this. So I started studying neuro-linguistic programming and it began to give me the tools to repattern myself. So what I learned to do was to actually shift um, my neural pathways and to build up these amazing relationship connectors within my being that brought me back into attunement with the truth of who I am. And that is that I am worthy for just being me. And so when you, when I say that to you and, and you're questioning, well, how does that work? Well, this is how it works. So when you're being you, and I don't mean like when you're being, well, when you're being any part of you, you're contributing to the world, to the universe at a molecular level. And imagine taking that into a place of pure, unconditional self-love. And you love yourself so much that you create happiness within you, happy to be you. Then imagine how that impacts the molecular structure of the universe. It's like, oh my God, it completely, like the universe does a happy dance, basically, because you're contributing just by being you. So that's really what I want to share with you in this video. And, and I know I started off saying, okay, it's about the self-talk. So um, this is the point I wanted to make. So when you're, when, when, you're, when you're having conversations with yourself, when you're talking to yourself, instead of being in that 77% realm of negativity, what if you were to start asking yourself different questions, such as, how does it get better than this? That is my favorite positive, open-ended question. Even if stuff's going sideways, especially if stuff is going sideways in your life, how does it get better than this? It just automatically opens the realm of possibilities to poof, just explode beyond the struggle, right? Another way of looking at it is if things are going really super amazing, it's like, how does it get better than this? And then suddenly super amazing becomes super califragilistic, expialidocious amazing. By the way, did you know that abracadabra is really an incantation of magic? So use that, abracadabra. It's old school and it's effective. So. Next question that I love is, so what else is possible? What else is possible? Because whenever we are dealing with life, and life is life, right? People are people, situations are situations, energy is everywhere. We're talking about using words right now for the purpose of managing energy and expanding energy. So what else is possible starts to bring in all of that stuff that you hadn't thought of yet. And there's the rub. You think you know, but you really don't know what you don't know. And I'm always looking for what I don't know that I don't know, because what I don't know I don't know is where my next possibility is. It's where my next put possibilities are. It's where my potential lies. It's the ever evolving energy of Deborah Peters as it should be for you. So lastly, a statement you can make is anything is possible. Now, 
Why wouldn't you say everything is possible? Why is anything is possible more expanded, infinite, limitless than everything is possible? Well, that's because when you say everything is possible, you're only giving permission to the possibility of everything that you already know. When we say anything is possible, you're giving permission to the positive possibilities of everything you know and everything you don't know and anything that exists anything it's like wow it suddenly you become and take ownership of the infinite being that you truly are and that is my message for the value and the importance of the questions that you ask yourself lots of love hit the subscribe button hit the bell, you'll get the notifications. Thank you so much for being a part of my life. I truly, truly am blessed to have you take the time to watch this. Ciao.